Hi everyone, it's Mark here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. We now have over 94,000 members across our five LinkedIn groups. So thank you if you're one of those. You probably are if you're watching this. This is the best bit of the job for me. This is where I get to meet some of our full members. Uh, full membership is only £10 a month and comes with opportunities to for awareness, development and exposure such as this and a matchmaking service that we offer. And Tom and I are in the middle of that process. Now, Tom, thank you so much for joining us as a full member and for joining me today. Thank you, Mark. Um, you look a little bit like a rabbit um, in the headlights because I haven't given you any warning about what's to come, and um, which is makes it much more fun for me, I have to tell you. Um, but it's great fun, and I'm hope I hope you'll in, you'll you'll say you've enjoyed this at the end. But before I do that, I just wanted to introduce you to our members. Um, Tom and I have have known each other through through others for many years. Right. Um, and reconnected uh, more recently. And Tom works with medium to large organisations in a range of different industries, including the arts and culture sector, who have a challenge, an unmet uh, challenge and opportunity relating to their commercial and marketing activity. And that can often result in missed opportunities for revenue generation. Um, and Tom has the key to that. Um, and has helped many sizable organizations to resolve those issues in the past. Um, so I'm referring to Tom as my um, arts and culture gold digger um, or treasure hunter might be nice. Nice. Very good. Be, Tom. I like that, Mark. I I'm not sure I can even add much more to that. That's a very succinct um, uh, identification. So let let's, let's go with that. Excellent. Well, I can now tell my wife that I do actually listen. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So just to, um, as a bit of an icebreaker, and for the benefit of our members who haven't yet met you, as and I've had the pleasure of meeting you and doing this. So we, we're going to do the arts and culture hot top 10. Actually, we're as as per your suggestion, I think, and thank you very much for bringing, making me think of this. We're actually going to change it to my cultural life, my my perfect cultural, actually, no, my perfect cultural year. That's Very what good. we're going to call it. And I'm going to paint a picture of your perfect cultural year by asking you some questions about your favourites in certain art forms or notable or those that you recall. And so by the end of this, I hopefully will have um will have will have completed that. Um it it works a treat and it often produces anecdotes and surprises. So, um, and then we'll do the this or that game quickly at the end. So are you ready, Tom? Let's, Silk? let's go. Excellent. Okay, so I'd like to know if you have a favourite building, and if so, what is it? Ooh, so I'm more of a tree guy than a building guy. So can I do okay. my favourite tree? Perhaps. That's the first surprise. That's the first surprise, is, and that's perfectly reasonable. Which is a tough one, but I'm going to go with the walnut. Um, just a magnificent beast um, with mm. a wonderful spread uh, a, a, and a, a wonderful fruit. So, yeah, if, yes. if you don't mind, I will go with the walnut tree. No, you can have the... Now, where, where might your favourite walnut tree be? Oh. Well, my favourite walnut tree would probably be close to the banks of a river, um, because uh, fundamentally, at my heart, I'm a nature lover, and uh, and rivers, and I suppose fly fishing would be um, certainly hobbies close to my heart. So, yes, I would say a, a, a mature walnut on the banks of a river would be pretty much my happy space. What about the Cam in Cambridge or something similar? With, uh, do you have well, I'm Oxford-based, Mark. So, you know, the Cam is probably oh, not as... Oh. Yeah, so oh. we're, we're in dangerous territory uh. here. So I'm going to go with ISIS, perhaps, um, rather than the yes. Cam. Um, if you're up for a bit okay. of punting on, on, the, on ISIS or the Thames, for those who are less familiar with this rather mm. odd trait that the Oxford has actually generated its own name for the River Thames but yes um let's go with yeah. that 
Okay, so I can picture you now, and as can our colleagues, you're sitting under in the summer under the wall, this beautiful walnut tree on a blanket with a picnic. Okay, and um, your fishing, your fly fishing gear is there ready for you to use. Good. And you're on the Thames in Oxfordshire, also known as Isis. Okay, so that's the, that's the scene I've set. Now, to develop this, um, I'm going to ask you, um, you've taken with you a book, mm. and that's on your right-hand side as you sit down facing the river with your back to the walnut tree. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, what book might you have been enjoying before ah. tucking into your picture? Well, it's a, it's a wonderful question, and thank you. So I am, I will say, I'm a member of a, uh, of a boys' book club, um, which we started about five years ago. And the book that I first introduced to my dear friends was the book that I would have uh, right next to me, um, which is a book by a chap called Larry McMurtry, and it's called Lonesome Dove. And um, Lonesome Dove, if you haven't read it, <laughs> make a note. I haven't. Uh, it yeah. is a wonderful, wonderful story about the journey of a group of old cowboys taking their last herd of cattle from deep southern Texas through to um, through, through up up through uh, to really the the railroads that lead to Chicago. Um, it's a wonderful journey. That's great. You can have that book next to you. And on your left is a beverage of some description. <laughs> um, uh, to to accompany your. Um, uh, I can see the picture now. It's great. Um, so, what that bev what might that beverage be? Oof, that's a tough one to narrow down. But if 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 it were sort of if it were cocktail hour, if it might be cocktail hour, I would be I'd be going very clearly down the Negroni route. Um, if it were if it were any earlier, <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't water. Uh, it would probably be a yeah. West Coast IPA, I suspect. A West Coast IB IPA. Nice. Yeah. I, that's lovely. Yeah. I, as an aside, I've been playing around with Mid Journey, which is an AI image generation tool. Uh, what I should really do is once I've seen this picture, I should create it of you. I, I should go into... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go okay, into Mid Journey. Okay, good. Brand my personality. Wonderful. I, I, I will. I, yeah. I like the so, sound of it. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to... That, that's going to be I'll do that after the after this if I'm allowed <laughs> excellent okay so you're there that's brilliant now um you've received an email that morning which is why you're quite pleased with yourself and you've taken the afternoon out off um because you've been uh, invited by a, a globally recognized research foundation in the arts and culture sector to travel to a country to do a study of its culture and report back okay it's all expenses paid and you'll be met by a group of new friends when you get there the the only caveat is there are two caveats the first one is that um you can't choose a country in which you've lived before okay okay so where would be where, where what, what's drawing you towards it well, I suppose, yeah, I, I'm fortunate. I, I've traveled quite a bit and, and a lot of that for business. So I've ticked a lot of boxes, probably at a somewhat superficial level. Um, if I were looking for complexity uh, of culture and endless depth, I would be veering towards Japan. Um, I, though, will go with Indonesia, which is a place I've spent a little time, but I've not lived. Um, but what a remarkable country of literally thousands of islands, all with their own subtle nuances, cultural differences. So I think I could be endlessly curious and intrigued. So I'm going to go with oh, Indonesia. Okay. So you're, that's, I love that. So you're now footing it down to Heathrow Airport um, and off you go. Now you, you're, you're, you're asked to open um, a letter from the research body once you're on the plane so that you can't go back, right? 
Um, and the cap, the second caveat of your of your all expenses paid trip for a year is that you're only allowed to listen to one genre of music for the whole year. Oof. Well, and they going they're going to study you the impact of that on you while you're away. So, which okay. genre of music are you going That's to so hard. focus on? So hard. Um, I know. I hate it. Uh... I, I, I'm eclectic. I'm super eclectic in my appreciation and love of music. I guess I will go. I've got to make a decision here. So I'm going to go with country, um, which just for me is like a warm hug, right? Uh, and and um, I, I just love the personalities of country and that and the storytelling the simple storytelling to a simple tune is a wonderful thing it is i'm a big country fan um i love some of the comedy uh, titles of the songs that you may have heard of um she stole my watch and now she's living on borrowed time <laughs> um and what was the other one um how can i miss you if you won't go away <laughs> yeah. And the other, the last one was, um, if I'd shot you sooner, I'd have been out of jail by now. <laughs> I, I, do, I do love that about it. It's, um, yeah. well, I mean, one of the things I, I, I can remember the first track that, that caught my ear was um, There's Your Trouble by the Dixie Chicks, who are now called the Chicks. And um, I was on a plane on the way up to a holiday and I thought, this how these harmonies are, I was trying to sing some of the, the three-part harmonies that they were doing and I couldn't quite, and because they had gelled so much together. I thought, really clever. That's one of well, the things I... It, it's interesting. I, I mean, I have to say now, looking at you through a country a, a country music lens, Mark, have you ever been... Has anyone clocked you for Johnny Cash? I mean, you, you, the man in black, for a start, but yeah. also with, a, yeah. with, with a, a slight quiff going there, which, you know, probably speaks to, you know, a, a, a handsome yeah. young... That's very kind of you, yeah. That, that, that could be a lot. I've had a few... I've had a few, I have been mistaken for Colin Firth with my glasses on, um, which, which some people can understand. So. Okay. Yes. Um, very good. But, yeah, any but, idea, any I idea who I've been mistaken for? Oh, I know. it's one. hard. It's hard. Um, and it was many years ago. I think probably when I had hair, um, I used to mm -hmm. get a bit of a stiller though. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. It's like partly because there, Mark. The, <laughs> no, no, really. Partly because a smile is never far from your lips either. <laughs> Excellent. So we've got you're listening to country music. You can I you when my um wife used to accuse me when I got into country for the first time and it was all still on CDs. I, I did take them all down. She took she was cleaning my our CD rack once and, and she said do you buy this with your eyes or your ears? Because every single CD I picked up and cleaned has got a, a statuesque skinny blonde on the front. So, <laughs> so it's Faith Hill and, um, and, 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 you know, and Leanne Rhymes and, and, um, in the collection, but no, um, I, that's, uh, that's, that's great. I love that. The idea of being, I could be stuck with country music for, for a long time. So good. Right. So, you're on your pl on the plane listening to country music not allowed to listen to anything else um and when you get there some uh, japanese um, friends have decided to come and welcome you and they want to give you a week of culture as a welcome um and they've decided they're going to take you to a performance of some dance and that's in a local tokyo art center and so indonesia uh, indonesia mark we sorry have... yes uh, indonesia so yes, it'll be some type of sort of shadow play, I suspect. Right. Okay. So you're in. You'll be in Jakarta, will you? Yeah, ideally not in Jakarta, but but I'll okay. take Jakarta if we have to be. Um, but, so they but, can. No, they, but it doesn't have to be a local art form. And um, the the art center in Jakarta is a magic one, oh. and they can provide you with a any. This is my world, right? Um, this is the. You can either you can choose a favorite dancer alive or dead, a favorite dance group, um, or a favorite dance style. You can choose anything you like in this magical art center. So what would you love to sit and watch that's dance related? 
Ooh, I dance wouldn't be my go-to um, medium of art, but you've asked me the question, so I'm I'm going to go with like the tango, Ooh. something just with a little bit of vim and vigor and elegance and passion. Right. Uh, yeah, so let's let's go let's let's go tango. Excellent. So you've had a lovely evening of of tango, um, and your friends are going to take you out for dinner after the show, oh. and you can choose any culinary cuisine you wish. Okay, so that that's actually relatively simple. Um, I, I I'm a firm believer that there is only one country in the world that truly excels at all levels of of food, and I do love food so I'm, I'm i'll go with japan and i know most people associate fish with japan for all the right reasons but actually it's so much more than that and their their beef their meat is mm. quite remarkable and i just love the the setting the idea of having someone in front of you perform um while creating these amazing dishes so let's go okay. let's go to japan Kyoto, mm -hmm. someone like that. The, 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 you're, you're still in Jakarta, but the okay. cuisine is your choice. <laughs> Kyoto-esque <laughs> Japanese food. Yeah, How's that? Yeah. Okay, so still in Jakarta, you've had your Japanese dinner um, after the dance performance, and the next day is Saturday, and so or the day on which they do all their sport. Now, again, you don't have to choose an Indonesian sport, you, but you you have the opportunity to be in Jakarta and watch or participate in, if you prefer, any kind of sport you wish. And wow. so which would be your choice? Well, I, as, as a veteran of sports marketing for many years, I, I, I've spent a lot of time in uh, appreciating sport. Um, I love nothing more than rugby as a as as a game to watch and used to play but actually the single game i feel stretches athletes more than any other is is basketball and i say that I, i'm a graduate of the university of north carolina chapel hill home of mm. michael jordan james worthy um I, I could go on um and so yeah b beneath this um pale english uh, body is the heart of a Tar Heel and basketball and North Carolina are as one. Brilliant. I love that. Okay. Yes. I'll give you basketball. Um, and so you've, that's been great. And so the, the following day, um, your friends announced that there is, um, a, there is an opening at a, a gallery and it's a, again, it's a magic one. And um, what they can do is press a button and all of the works of art by a single visual artist or sculptor um, will magically come to this gallery and be laid out in chronological order for you to mm. walk through. Um, who, whose work would you like to experience in that way? Caravaggio. I Ooh. would have to say I was thinking of Rodin, but, um, but yeah, Caravaggio is a master almost beyond compare for me um so yeah, I, yeah. I, let, let, let's go with him lovely i love that have you watched any of those fake or fortune tv shows um they're good fun okay um, i'll uh, make a note it's fiona bruce and philip mold who is um uh an art dealer in from the from bond street and they invite the TV audience to bring things in that they think might be special, and they have found new constables and um, and and were and a, a new Tony Yeah, fascinating. Okay. Worth a look. Um, okay, so we've done that. Now, it, it, after the sporting events, um, it's a trip to the theatre, and you can choose to watch any play or musical you wish. Okay. Blimey. Well, I suppose emotionally, uh, I'm going to go a little off piece. Um, my wife is a great lover of musicals. Um, and when we first met, in order to impress my wife, um, I decided to take her to a musical. What I hadn't appreciated was that her, she has a very specific definition of musical, which is broadly anything that was created before 1965-ish. 
um <laughs> so west side story um south pacific i took her to avenue q which you may not recall but avenue q is a little bit like sesame street it's a sort of sesame street type musical i remember um, it and, and suffice to say, so so that's my choice. I'm going to go with that uh, purely yeah. on an, at an emotional level, um, and and not least because even after I had shown my true hand as a complete uh, Neanderthal vis-a-vis -vis musicals, my wife um, decided that you know she would let that one slip. So yeah, there you go. Nice. Have you cue. My the highlight of my time at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London in the in the early eighties was. Um, we were playing a we were performing a production of Bernstein's Mass, which very rarely gets performed because it it requires huge resources. Um, and he came and conducted one of the rehearsals. Um, so I got to meet Leonard Bernstein, which was fantastic. Wow. Um, yeah, right. You can have Ave Avenue Q, Q. And finally, for this for this part, um, there's a magic cinema next door. Um, and your friends want you to want to know what movie you would want them to watch for the first time. Oh, oh, that's hard. OK, well, I'm just going to go top of mind, top of top of head is mm. I'm going to go with the deer hunter. It's um, mm. that, oh God, is that a good look or a bad look? I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm going to go with the deer hunter maybe with an edited wedding scene that perhaps doesn't take the 40 odd minutes i think that uh that, that is allotted yeah uh, but uh yeah a, a film that just touches me at so many levels yeah uh, i'm, I'm and, with yeah so we'll go with, with deer hunter deer hunter is great i'm with you with that on that it's one of those films that has an indeterminate length for me yeah um i i, I can't I don't because you've become so immersed in that scene of that kind of Midwest industrial setting at the start, and um, you, I just lose track of time. Um, and and the and the kind of pacing of the movie uh, does that as well. But yeah, I mean, it's probably a good thing given that I think it runs well beyond three hours. Uh, I suspect the ability to forget time probably is a good one. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a positive. <laughs> I love that saying about Wagner operas as well. You, you you go to a Wagner opera, and and four hours in, you look at your watch and realize you've only been there for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that lovely saying about and because sport is included in our cultural world, um, I think it was uh, Groucho Marx was taken to Lords to watch a cricket match once and. Um, I think you might have heard this and um an hour and a half later somebody said how are you enjoying it and he said it's great when does it start <laughs> <laughs> um yes our american cousins don't understand how a game can last five days and be a draw so um i, I anyway, love nothing great. more than a, a good five day test by the way so i know throw yeah, that one when a really good one um just quickly yeah. apart from me who was the last person to make you laugh Oh, my wife, I think, um, probably uh, earlier this morning. I forget <laughs> quite Brilliant. what the context was, but <laughs> we laugh a lot. Excellent. That's good. Right. We're, that's fantastic. That was brilliant. Thank you. So the, the ice break, the ice has been broken, which is lovely for, for those who watch it. Now, this is a bit more fast paced. OK. Uh, we don't need anecdotes. We just need answers. So I'm going to give you one or the other and you have to choose one, I'm afraid. That's fine. Um, and we'll see how far we uh, how we get on. Um, again, so it, this always produces surprises for me, which is great. Okay, so tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or television? Telly. Car or motorcycle? Motorcycle. Nice. There's the surprise. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Probably sports stadium. Cat or dog? dog test the water or dive in at the deep end test the water <laughs> <laughs> orange juice bits or no bits bits library or museum museum beethoven or mozart mozart shower or bath shower cooking or being cooked for being cooked for 
Fiction or non-fiction? Ooh, non-fiction. Shopping online or in store? Is there C? None of the above. <laughs> <laughs> in store, I guess. Yeah. Um, sand or snow? Sand. Um, reggae or salsa? Reggae. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Somewhere in the middle, start immediately. <laughs> Science or history? History. New York or Los Angeles? Somewhere in the Midwest. No, um, I'll go with New York. What the heck? I live there. Black or white? White. Circle or square? Circle. Early morning or late at night? Early morning. Messy desk or tidy desk? Pretty messy desk. <laughs> <laughs> um, plan it or wing it? Plan it. Bedroom door, open or closed? Closed slash ajar. <laughs> Uh, toilet roll, over or under? Ooh, uh, over? Zombies or vampires? Uh, vampires? Red or white wine? Red. Batman or Superman? Batman. Numbers or words? Words. Rare or well done? Rare. Basketball or baseball? Basketball. Mild or spicy? Spicy. Opera or chamber music? Chamber music. Whiskey or rum? Whiskey. North or South London? Ooh, live both. Go north. Stripes or spots? <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting stuck on that one. Spots. <laughs> um, football or rugby? Rugby. Um, mountains or beaches? Beaches. Sweet or savoury snacks? Savoury. Netflix at home or cinema out? Netflix. Travelling or staying at home? Ooh, travelling. Contemporary or classical art? Classical. Black and white or colour photography? Ooh, maybe black and white. Shakespeare or Chekhov? Shakespeare. Um, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? Hemingway. Science fiction or fantasy? Science fiction. And finally. Drum roll. Brrr, see the future or change the past. Oof. Blimey. Um, oh, God, I'm not sure I really want to do either, Mark, but I guess I will look into the future. Oh, well, God. at least that will oh, give really you the luck. Yeah, at least that'll give you the lottery tickets for next weekend, won't it? <laughs> yes. Um, Tom, that was brilliant. Thank you for doing that. Well, You're a good you. sport. Um, I hope it wasn't too painful, but it does give everyone else who sees this a chance to feel as though they've got to meet you. So thank you so much. Um, don't rush off, but we'll. But in the meantime, thank you very much again for being one of our valued uh, full members. And thank you so much for doing this today. Thank you, Mark. And, you know, for, for all those out there, full membership. I mean, it's just full of wonderful offers and surprises. Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs>